I'm going to hop on the scale. Well, the bar doesn't go up, that's good. Looks like about 155 and 12 ounces. It's slowly headed in the right direction. Crazy, say good morning! Like now I'm too sour to say good morning. Actually, almost 11 o'clock. We've had a little bit of a rough morning. This morning, yesterday, Mary managed to fall out, outside when she was walking home from the playground. So she had ouchy on her leg, and I just kind of put everything off to a kind of a bad start this morning. Okay, light, come on. There we go. And then Gracie missed her nap this morning. Say, so yes, I did, which makes her doubly grumpy. And I did some school with the little guys because I'm just trying to get them sort of on schedule again and just a little bit more back to normal, whatever normal is. But I was outside and I was looking at my rose bush and I have been invaded by those pesky little worms again. So I'm going to make an uh, insecticidal soap. I think I showed you guys how to do this last year, but I'm going to show you again this year. And I don't know if I can show you. I'm going to be using this sprayer that one of you guys gave me. I love this sprayer. And I'm going to put the soap in there and we're going to spray the rose plants a couple times today, tomorrow. And we're just going to keep an eye, eye on the plants, make sure the plants don't burn from the soap. But we want to really make sure those worms die and they stop destroying my rose bushes because I thought I, didn't, well, I wasn't going to have any this year. But they're on there I spoke too soon. There's a lot of different ways you can make your own insecticidal soap. But the most common way is using the Castile soap, and this is the Watkins brand. In fact, they just, well, they just, they released this a year ago, and it was on sale, and I knew I wanted to have some of this stuff, so I actually bought it when it was on sale. But I have yet to use it because I knew I would use this for insecticidal soap. So the, the normal recipe, at least what I could find online, is one quart of water to a generous tablespoon of the castile soap. And uh, let me show you something really neat. On this jug, they actually have the marking. So this is two quarts here, or actually it's two liters. And this is one and a half liters. A tablespoon. Oh, this comes out fast. Whoop. Okay. I hope that's a tablespoon. Oh, let me get the no, oh. And then we gotta put the top in. I can't take Can you put the top in? Oop. Push it down. Okay, right here. Okay, now can you push air in it? Go ahead, pump it up. Mary, gently, gently. That's right, good job. Here are my rose bushes. And this is what happens when I get these little worms. They start to um, eat the tops of them. And the worms are really hard to see, but there's one right there. And I've got some more over here. Mommy, we have some worms. And the Mommy, we have some worms. See the little wormies right here? Yeah. They're not good. We've got to spray them. And then they'll just slowly work their way up the plant until there's really nothing left of the plant. You can see the roses are just starting to come out. And this plant doesn't seem to have quite as bad as an infestation yet. Um, and I picked off a whole bunch of them yesterday, but obviously I'm getting more and more. So we're gonna just spray these. We're just gonna put a light coating on this, making sure we get those worms really good. And I'll probably actually end up spraying most of the plant, just because I'm sure the worms will go wherever there's not this soap stuff. I've sprayed all the plants, and we'll probably have to do this again tomorrow in another couple days. and. We'll see if we can stop our problem because all the plants have it. Although I don't see the worms on this plant, but I see the damage. Last night, I don't even know what time it was. I think it was maybe three, four o'clock. I woke up to this horribly strong smell of skunk. And it wasn't just the, you know, the ordinary smell of skunk roaming through the outdoors. It was that really strong smell that makes you sick because it's so close to your house sick. So, so I woke up Art and I said, do you smell that? And he's like, ooh. Anyways, we got up, we closed the windows and um, you know, by morning the smell was gone. So I'm outside in the garden and look what I found. My entire front garden is dug up and I'm thinking, this is the work of the skunk last night. And that's the, that's why we smelled what we smelled. I don't know if he dug up any of the flowers or not. Didn't look. Yeah, he, like he dug up this. 
dug that up. I'll replant it, see if I can get it to grow. But that must have been it, Charity. That's why it smelled like a big old stinky skunk yeah. out here. Because look at he went all the way around here. And you know, when I was gardening in here, I noticed there was grubs in here. So he must have found something quite delicious to eat. We're having a big um, ordination <laughs> supper at our church this weekend. And Charity and I have volunteered to cook 50 pounds of hamburgers. So the lady just came by and dropped off all the meat and we're going to start the cooking process. And as soon as we finish cooking it, we're actually taking it down to the church and we're gonna put it in the freezer so it'll be ready for Sunday. But this is something we can do at our house to help. And quite honestly, cooking this much meat is, we cook so much all the time that this is really no big deal. So look at all that meat. And so there's all the meat there. And we're gonna get cooking and see how much of this we can get done. We've cooked about 25, maybe 30 pounds of hamburger so far. And John has entered the kitchen and is learning how to do it. No, 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 be gentle, John. Cooking is not a violent sport. You wanna hold one hand of the, John, put one hand on the pan here so you don't, the pan doesn't, doesn't, go, doesn't flying. go flying. And this is what we have left to cook. This bag here, this bag here. We've got two of these already packaged. It's been so insanely crazy since the last time I picked up the camera. Art got home and he needed to start thawing out the freezer downstairs because he took, took a look at the refrigerator and he's thinking that some ice build up in the fan in the cooler and that's why it wasn't turning and that's why it wasn't cooling the refrigerator. So the best solution was that was to turn off the machine, turn off the refrigerator, let it thaw out and then see if it'll start back up and cool down again. And if that's the case, it's an easy fix. It's just some time. But while he was working on that, I went ahead and went out to the garden, planted some more eggplants and bok choy because those plants are looking so extremely sad. I just have not had enough time to put those last couple plants in. So I put some of them in. I did not get all of them in, but I at least started putting some of them in. Then we ended up, we went down to church, but Grace was just, she was just a grumpy mess. And so I ended up coming home early from church and Art's still down there with the other kids. But I came home and I put Grace to bed. There was no point in staying there when she was so miserable. And now I have like 45 minutes to myself and I don't know quite what to do with myself. If you follow me on Facebook, and if you didn't know I was on Facebook, there's a link for it in the description below. I posted a recipe today from King Arthur's website for this almond Danish that had like jelly on the top. It looks so good. So I'm sort of tempted to actually cooking something that's kind of going around in the back of my mind. And that's one thing when I get a little stressed, I'm a little stressed over the refrigerator going because I mean, you guys know that we just bought a van, we just bought a new hot water heater. And you know, we had money saved up for these things and we could swing a refrigerator, but it's, it's pulling our cushion away. And I really would like to build our cushion up and not keep taking from it since I've already taken so much from it this year. So I'm a little stressed about that. I really would like to just fix the refrigerator and keep it for a little bit longer. And when I, anyways, so when I get stressed, the thing that I do is I like to cook. There's just nothing better than cooking. If I can't cook, the next best thing is playing the piano. So I decided that I was going to work on figuring out our homeschool curriculum for next year. I've purchased a lot of it, but I'm just not sure what else I need. So having the quiet house, that's what I chose to use my time with. And Art sadly lost his pedometer. Yeah, I don't know how many steps. I'm getting cheated out of steps every time I take a step. That's a real disappointment. Yeah, disappointment. To, to me it is. Yes. And um, he even, you know, it's disappointing when he drove all the way back to church because he thought that was where he might have left it. And we still didn't find it. No, didn't find it. But it will show up. Um, and tonight I am going to try to finish up the refrigerator. Uh, it's almost thawed out. And when it does, I have to clean it up and then start it back up. Ugh. And <laughs> yeah, it's a little nasty. But it needs to get cleaned. So I'm going to start it back up and hope it works. Yes. And I'm going to hit the hay. 
not much is scheduled for the rest of this week, which is Yay. amazing. I do have a haircut appointment tomorrow afternoon, but other than that, we're hopefully going to settle back down into a more normal routine because as you guys have watched, the it's last, what, good. four, five weeks has been absolutely insane, even for our family. I mean, we're mm -hmm. a busy family, but that was like off the charts busy. So we want to settle down and try to just regain what we feel like we've lost with scheduling with the kids and just get back to normal. That's right. Whatever normal is. You know, with a large family, there is no normal. <laughs> is there? No. There's never a normal. Normal because, is abnormal. Right. As soon as some you get normal, somebody gets sick, and then everything's abnormal again. So you might as well just roll with the punches. But we're going to try to somewhat get organized and roll with the punches at the same time. I need to finish up the garden this week. Um, and I think that's it. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's video and hopefully tomorrow morning when I get up, the refrigerator is working and good night. Oh, good night. <laughs> I went over to the neighbor's house. I borrowed some coolers and I emptied out our freezer. Yeah, to let it thaw out. I think I figured out the problem, but I'm not totally sure. There's ice in those two vent holes, and I'm thinking that uh, just the air wasn't circulating through. So I let that thaw out. Let's see, is there any ice left in there? I hear a little more ice kicking around in there. I'm thinking that now that the ice is thawed out, uh, it will probably work again. Uh, that's what I'm hoping. I started the refrigerator up again, and I'm going to put the thermometer in there. We'll see if it's working. The refrigerator's been running for about uh, maybe a half an hour. Let's see what the temperature is. Still a little warm, 66. Let's hope it cools off.